Good afternoon. This is Pastor Kara Knutson with our Faith Five. Um, today I'm going to share um, a bummer. And uh, I think what happened in Minneapolis with um, the police brutality and, and the beating was deplorable. And um, I have so many emotions going inside of me. I'm very angry. I'm very sad. Um, and these types of events that are taking place just cannot continue. And I don't know what the answer is. But I feel like I need to speak out and say that I just very strongly feel that the actions that were taken cannot be condoned. So I don't know if it's going to take writing to the police precinct or writing to the governor or the mayor, um, but something needs to change. And I think we as people of faith, uh, part of our call, as I understand it, is to speak up and advocate for those who are in um, a vulnerable position for whatever reason. And uh, I want to read from Amos chapter 5 verses 21 to 24 I hate I despise your festivals and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon take away from me the noise of your songs I will not listen to the melody of your harps but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness flow like an ever-loving stream. Pretty clear that uh, if we're not going to live out the way we are called to live as uh, being the light of Christ in a world of um, being dedicated to, to justice, um, then God doesn't want to have anything to do with our, our lip service to God. That being said, uh, I'd also like to share uh, my highlight, and I am just so impressed with um, the situation that brings the best and the worst out in people. Uh, I saw a really moving video online where um, a police chief brought his whole uh, crew down, whatever you call a, a group of police officers <laughs> and um, he took off his helmet and he laid his baton down on the ground and he said I don't want people to feel that all police officers are like those police officers in Minneapolis and uh, he gave a really uh, moving speech and then people started chanting walk with me walk with me and they walked down the sidewalk and he says I don't want this to be a protest I want this to be a parade. Uh, and then hearing about people who showed up in Omaha early Sunday morning and brought their scrub buckets and helped um, remove graffiti and, and clean up damage from the protests. So stay safe out there and um, just take this time to really think about what's going on and how God calls us to respond. Now I want to share with you my favoriteest, favoriteest passage in scripture. I have a lot of them, but this is one of them that I really, really like. When things are really, really terrible, uh, this is the passage that I turn to. So Habakkuk has seen his world around him just really struggle and things continually get worse. And um, he's having this conversation with God and it's like, you know, what's going on? And he goes back and forth and he's, it's a real, real low, you know, he talks about how his flesh is rotting from him and these kinds of things. But then at the very end, and Habakkuk's a very short book, it's only uh, three chapters. But then at the very end, he says this. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, 
though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights. So figs and olives and grain were not only major food supplies, but they were also um, means of, of uh, I guess you'd say they're like a commodity. You could exchange them. You know, it's like, well, I'll give you um, 100 jugs of olive oil and you're going to give me, you know, 10 measures of grain and then we'll both have oil and we'll both have grain and we can make bread. So it'd be like saying, though the oil price, though the oil supplies dwindle and there's no bread on the grocery shelves and there's no corn in the fields, there's no cows or pigs to be bought uh, and things are looking really, really bad. Even in those times, I will rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because the God of our salvation, the Lord is our strength. And that's what we need to hold on to. When God gives us strength, even uh, shy people who have a hard time speaking out and saying something that might be unpopular, God gives them the courage and the conviction to do so. So today I want to pray for the family of Mr. Floyd. I want to pray for uh, our country, for people of color, uh, and how those of us who are not of color can stand beside and advocate for and empower So let us pray. Dear God, be with us. We have seen evil in our sight. The breath that you use to animate and fill the church has been snuffed out of a man who is a child made in your own image. Forgive us, God. Help us, lead us, guide us into how we can be those that stand up and take a stand and look out for those among us in our churches, in our communities, in our country, and in our world whose voice is being stampled out and isn't being able to be heard. Give us the courage and the power to use our privilege to help others who are stuck and victimized. We thank you for the example of, of the goodness that lies within people that, that comes to the surface in a time like this. Help us, God. In your name we pray. Amen. You are a child of God beloved and known. Peace be with you.